Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to talk about working with style mats and our 4K mat transitions inside of HitFilm. I'm very excited about this tutorial to show you how these great elements work very easily inside of this great editing and compositing application. Now, what we're going to do for this lesson is, like I said, we're going to break it up into two lessons. We're going to talk about our Rampant Style Mats. You'll remember the Style Mats look a little bit like this. There's a huge collection of them that you can find for purchase on the Rampant Design Tools website at rampantdesigntools.com. And I'm going to show you how we can add elements to an existing timeline using these style mats. And then what I'm going to do is show you how we can work with these great 4K matte transitions inside of your timeline. So if you want to create some very cool transition effects, you don't need to worry about getting in and creating them yourselves when you can have an entire library of Rampant Design Tools transitions at your fingertips to use them literally with a few clicks of your mouse. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into HitFilm and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into HitFilm 4 Pro, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And obviously you're gonna create your project settings however you need them to be. In my case, because our base clip is going to be 720p, I'm just gonna create a new project, 720p, 1280 by 720, 23976 frames per second. I'm simply gonna say start editing. And once my HitFilm project comes up, what we're going to do is we're going to import our clips to work with. Let's just bring in our two clips that we're going to use. One is going to be our background. The other is going to be the clip that's going to appear inside of our style mat. And I'm going to bring in my style mat as well. We're going to leave the, the transition effect for the next part of the lesson. All I'm going to do is simply say open. You'll see the clips have now appeared inside my project. And my waterfall is going to be the base layer here. So let's just drop this in. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that whatever the clip that we drag and drop into our timeline obviously matches and that everything is set up properly. In most cases, you might be familiar with this. This is how it works inside of Premiere and inside of Adobe's After Effects as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, let's set our sequence to match the clip. And I'm just going to tell HitFilm to remember my choice and don't ask me again. OK. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. We want our clip to start right at the beginning of the timeline here. You'll see we got this pretty cool looking waterfall. Very nice. And what I'm going to do is with this waterfall, I'm going to take my lifeguard tower. I'm going to put it in right over top. Now, what's important to keep in mind about this lifeguard tower is that if I actually zoom back on the canvas, you'll see that it is actually bigger than the frame. So what's important to keep in mind is that really when we're talking about rampant design tools elements, it doesn't matter how big the element is to work with. You can work with really, you know, again, this is, you know, 720p. We could work with 2K, 4K, and even 5K elements that, of course, are available when you make your purchase of these elements from the rampant design tools website. Really, all we have to do is just scale them and position them however we're going to want them to appear in our project. Okay, so once I have the clip in here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit my canvas back to be full frame and I'm going to right click on my clip and I'm going to make a composite shot with this element. And you know, I could just call it lifeguard beach tower composite. Okay. And I'm going to take the composite shot properties from the selected clip. And if I had any effects, I could either leave them here or move them with the clip. We're just going to leave everything the way that it is. And I'm simply going to say, okay, What's going to happen once I do that is I'm now going to actually step into that composite shot. You can see that I have the lifeguard tower right here, ready to go. Okay, And I can come back and I can hit play on it if I wanted to so we can see it play in real time. Very cool. But what we want to do is get that style mat in here. So all I'm going to do is simply take the style mat and I'm going to drag it and drop it right above the lifeguard tower. Now you're going to see it appear here. Okay. And we can see a transition in. Now I'm dragging through. Again, I can hit play. We can see what it does in real time. Now, of course, again, what I'm going to do here is just zoom back. Now, you can see that because the lifeguard tower shot is the same size as the Rampant Design Tool style mat, everything matches each other just like such. But it's a little bit bigger than the frame that we came from or the frame size that we came from. But we'll deal with that in just a second. What I want to do now is I want to tell the lifeguard beach shot to look at the rampant style mat to use as a mat. So how do I go about doing that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to the effects tab and inside of the search window, I'm going to type in set mat. Okay. It's going to take us to the keen section to the mat enhancement category and there is set mat layer only. 
Now what most people think is that because the rampant design tools element is the mat layer, that that's what we're gonna to wanna to apply this effect to, but it's actually not. What we wanna do is we wanna take it and drag it and drop it onto the lifeguard beach shot. So lifeguardbeach.mov. Now you'll see that as soon as I drag and drop, nothing has happened. What we need to do is we need to tell the effect what we want it to exactly look at in the rampant style mat layer. I'm just gonna twirl down the effect. You'll see right now, the first thing it's gonna say is, okay, Kev, what layer do you wanna use? Well, the source layer that I wanna use is, of course, the ramp and style mat right there. Now, in most cases, depending on the ramp and design tools element that you're working with, you might see something happen here at this point because a lot of the elements actually ship with alpha channels. This element here, I specifically didn't give it an alpha channel because I wanted to show you how it works both ways. In the next part of the lesson, I'm gonna show you how we work with elements with alpha channels. So in this case, what I wanna do is instead of the mat source being alpha, I'm simply gonna set it to luminance. Now, as soon as I do, nothing has happened. The reason being is because I still have this layer turned on. Believe it or not, I actually don't need this layer turned on at all. I can actually turn the layer off just like that because it's still looking at the layer, I just don't need to see it. We're using its information, but it's not going to be visible. Okay, now the only problem is that what I actually wanna have happen is I want the lifeguard tower to be revealed over here on the left, not laid out like this. So all I'm gonna do is that instead of having the blend be to replace, I'm gonna have the blend be to subtract. And you'll see now that if I come back and I hit play, we're now revealing that lifeguard tower. Now, of course, what I could do, depending on the size of this lifeguard tower shot, I could actually come into the transform section. I could come down to scale. We could just scale this up a little bit. I can, of course, reposition it up here like that. Very nice. And I'm gonna come back and hit play. Now, the shot works exactly the way that I want it to. You see it comes in, transitions in, reveals the lifeguard tower, but what happens is right as we get towards the end, the transition disappears and then cuts back to the lifeguard tower full frame, which is not what we wanna have happen. But it's a very easy fix. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my time bar. We're just gonna drag back a little bit here to the point, and I can just go through frame by frame here, to the point where the transition starts to come out, which is right about here. And what's gonna happen is on that very last frame where the mat is there right there, right before it goes back to full frame, this is where we wanna make an edit. So I'm just gonna call up the razor blade. We're just gonna cut our layer right here. I'm gonna hit V on the keyboard to bring the selection tool back up. And I'm just gonna delete this layer that has now appeared there. All I'm gonna do now is simply come back and hit play. And you're gonna see it transitions on, shows the lifeguard tower, and then transitions off, okay? and the lifeguard tower doesn't reappear again. So believe it or not, we're actually done. All I need to do is switch back to the editor. I can now come all the way back to the beginning. Now, one thing you're gonna notice as I click through is that it doesn't quite look the same as it did when I was actually in the composite shot. Why is that? Well, remember, these two elements were larger than the frame that I was working in. So when it makes the composite shot, it looks at that clip and makes the composite shot the same size. So if I zoom back, you're gonna see that that frame is actually a lot bigger than the frame that I'm working in, which is actually very cool. It gives us the flexibility to reposition the shot like such if I wanted to. But if I wanted everything just to be full frame, it's actually very easy to do. All I need to do is simply right click on the shot. What I can do is I can come down to the transform option and simply say fit to frame, just like that. Now I don't need this audio channel down here. So what I'm gonna do is just unlink. I'm gonna delete the audio channel here. I can now come back to the beginning. Let's fit this back to be full frame in the canvas. I'm gonna hit play. And there is my very cool style mat animated perfectly inside of my hit film for pro timeline. Very cool. Okay, so let me now show you how we're gonna get in and do this as a transition as opposed to just having it appear as an element coming onto the screen. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna create a new project for this. I'm just gonna say new, we're not gonna save anything here. I'm just gonna create another new project. We're just gonna go with the exact same parameters that we had before. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind about this style mat is that it's actually a 5K element that we're going to be working with. So what I'm gonna do is say import and let's come down. I'm just gonna transition this over. It's actually a 4K element, not a 5K element. And again, let's just bring in our same shots, except this time, instead of the style mat, let's bring in this 4K mat transition. I'm gonna say open. I'm gonna bring my waterfall back in. We're gonna have it conform the sequence to this clip. And what I'm gonna do here is just zoom in a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this lifeguard beach shot and I'm gonna put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter where I put it for right now. Again, exactly the same thing, right click. We're gonna come down to make composite shot. We're gonna leave everything the way that it is. We could actually rename this to get rid of that .mov if we wanted to. I'm gonna say okay. 
And now what I'm gonna do is instead of taking my style mat, we're gonna take our transition effect and I'm gonna drag and drop it right above the lifeguard tower. Now, of course, what's important to keep in mind is if I zoom back, it's huge, okay? So of course, much like we'd done before, what I could do is simply come down to my transform options and we could scale this element however we want it to be. Sometimes you might want the element to be a little bit bigger than the frame. And what's gonna happen when I hit play is that you're gonna see that it does the transition the problem is that it doesn't really do the transition because obviously we haven't set it up to do that properly. But you can see that any element that you bring in with an alpha channel will of course be completely keyable inside of HitFilm. Now what I'm gonna do is just scale this back to fit. And let's get this set up now again, much like we did before. We're gonna to come to our search. I'm gonna type in set mat, okay? We're gonna take the set mat effect. We're gonna drag and drop it onto the lifeguard beach tower. Much like we did before, we're gonna choose the source layer, which is the rampant 4K matte transitions. But what we wanna do is make sure that the alpha channel layer is selected. And in this case, it's not quite doing what we want it to do. What we actually wanna have it do, and we'll just come back to the beginning here. You'll see, there we go. Now, it doesn't appear as though that the effect is actually doing what we want it to, but remember, it actually is, because what's happening is, is that we're actually seeing that keyable element appear over top of the footage. So we're gonna to wanna to turn that layer off. So this way when I come back, I can simply hit play and there is the shot being revealed exactly the way that we want it to be. Now again, we have the same problem that we had before. What happens is that when we get down to the end, the shot disappears, which is not what we wanna have happen. What we wanna have happen is, is that at any point after the transition has established itself, we can actually remove it. So here's what we're gonna do. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to my blade tool. We're gonna to blade the actual effect itself and our layer. We're gonna then hit V on the keyboard to call up our selection tool. And I'm gonna delete this element here. And on the rest of the clip here, remember that even though I split the layer, the effect is still on it. So all I'm gonna do, twirl it down, I'm gonna to come to effects and I'm just going to remove that effect by simply hitting delete. So now what's gonna have happen is, is that the effect is on the first part of the shot when I hit play to establish and then of course we just go back to the regular shot to complete the composite. Now what's very cool about this is that if I come back to the editor, you'll remember I said I'm gonna throw this in really anywhere. So I'm just gonna again unlink and let's remove the audio here because I might decide that, you know what? I don't want this waterfall up that long. Let's just have this you know, establish itself right here. There we go. Now of course again, keep in mind that we are working in a 1920 by 1080 framed shot. So what I'm gonna do, you'll see, there we go. I'm gonna right click, we're gonna say transform, fit to frame, there we go. And let's just put everything back the way we had it before, there we go, nice. Well, it's very cool about setting things up this way is that if you decide, you know what, that happens a little bit too early, no problem. Because everything's contained within the composite, all I have to do is just grab it and move it down like such. And now we've changed where it's going to appear inside of our timeline. And of course the shot below can, you know, finish whenever it wants. Doesn't matter, we now have our next shot all ready to go. Now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements to work with, you can head on over to 4kfree.com and to check out our entire product line and some great tutorials to get you up and running nice and quick, you can check us out at rampantdesigntools.com.
Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you how simple it is to use these fantastic matte elements inside of your HitFilm 4 Pro timeline and why rampant design tools elements are really going to be your go-to elements to create very cool looks that will wow and amaze your clients every time.